Right guys, welcome back to the Gold Merit channel, the number one place for reviews, comparisons, 300 yard drives, and much, much more. Today, I'm at King's Golf in East Grinstead to review the brand new TaylorMade Stealth Irons. These could be very, very special. I haven't hit them yet, so let's go down to the track man now, talk about them, and hit some balls. Okay, so the TaylorMade Stealth Iron. Now, the TaylorMade Stealth range, the family, is perhaps one of the most exciting families we've seen for some time. But in all honesty, that's largely down to the drivers. With that new era of a carbon wood being introduced, I feel like there may be a, a bit of a danger of the Stealth Irons being a bit kind of swept under the radar a little bit. So I'm here to talk about them today and why I think they could be one of the best beginner sets of 2022. Before we get into the technology, I won't bore you too much with it because it is largely similar to previous iterations. But one big thing for me is the design of the TaylorMade Stealth in comparison to previous versions. If you have been a loyal subscriber to Golf Magic for the last few years, especially last year, we were a big fan of the Sim 2 irons, but they were very good for beginners. But the one criticism we had was that the design was a bit it wasn't that pleasing. It wasn't a nice iron set for us golf purists, people who play a lot of golf. When you see any sort of beginner's iron set, they're, they're pretty ugly, to be blunt, and fair enough to tailor made because this iron set is actually a big, big improvement, and it's one of the most aesthetically pleasing beginner's iron sets I've seen for quite some time. You can't make them as nice as a Mizuno, let's say, because they've got to be large. You've got to have a large sole, a thick top line. But looking at this Stealth, they haven't made it that all over the place. It's still quite minimalistic, let's say, in its design. There's not too much going on, but they've still been able to pack in a lot of technology and forgiveness into quite a small iron head. Now, a few main things to notice here is that it's got a really nice colorway, quite a sleek black and gray colorway. They haven't gone too crazy in design. Last year with the Sim 2, it was blue, but it was a little bit all over the place. Now they've kind of laid it back a little bit, still kept some of the designs from the Sim 2, but made it a little bit more pleasing to the eye. And I genuinely think because of this, although it is targeted at the beginner players, you can have this from a handicap of 36, probably all the way down to single figures. I could happily have one of these in my bag as a long iron, plenty for design and also for performance alone. The main piece of technology I will talk about is that refined cap back design. It's a revolutionary piece of technology that TaylorMade have introduced. It was present in their Sim 2 range, but they have now refined it and improved it even more to make an exceptional club. They've really focused on the toe weighting that you can see here and really used that to optimize the CG and also the MOI of this club as well. So you can see looking down at it, one big improvement, again, this isn't really talking about the, the actual technology, but they've removed the I think, chamfer on the top of the club that you had in the Sim 2. Uh, was not very pleasing of the eye. They listened to feedback and have actually taken it out now. So again, just looking, looking down at this club, it does have a thick top line. And I don't think there's actually too much difference to the Sim 2 apart from that. But that's a good thing because we do like the way the Sim 2 looked. And if you're looking at it now, all pluses. I've got a six iron in hand. I'll talk about our lofts later, but I reckon this will probably go about, well, it's a four iron loft, so probably about 230 yards or so. Tell you what, that's a pretty decent start there. Uh, 215 yards, so maybe not, maybe not as far as I initially estimated, fair enough, but that felt very, very strong there. And we're looking at those numbers, attack angle, they're all really solid numbers. And I will point you to that spin rate being at 4,800. That's a lot higher than I actually thought it was gonna be. I think that's another good one. Yeah, so being able to hit that pretty consistently is very good. I think you're gonna see pretty, pretty bang on those numbers there throughout. So it, what I will mention is not the longest club in the world, not the longest club at all, but I will probably pinpoint that spin right now to be a little bit higher than what I expected. Could be down to the golf ball, but I'm not using a high spinning golf ball. They're actually a lot better and a lot, I guess, tamer numbers than you would consider. I think when you always talk about tailor-made and how, how much they push distance, you'd think, okay, they're gonna really lower the spin, lower the lofts and everything, and it's gonna be a basically, it's what I said, this is gonna be a four iron. From hitting it so far, it doesn't actually feel like a four iron. This isn't the craziest numbers I've ever seen. I've seen crazier numbers from a Mizuno, a brand that is classical and traditionalist. It seems that with this iron here, they're more focusing on that forgiveness, the dispersion rate, 
rather than actually trying to hit a six iron 240 yards. I think I blocked that one slightly, which is a shame. Oh, wow, yeah, I really did. Well, we'll keep that one in because that one was about 30 yards right, but it wasn't a good strike, but I'm still getting very good ball speed. So all numbers there are staying consistent with, again, pretty much identical data for the carry for the really important numbers, and I didn't hit it great. Smash factor, although it would have been high, my club face, where I actually hit it, I hit it was a little bit low and out of the heel, my usual miss and yet it still went pretty far. I wish, I wish it didn't go far, as far right, <laughs> but we're not gonna complain about that. For a bad shot, to still probably be just off the green, maybe just in the bunker or something, that's what you need for a beginner's iron, something that still gets you pin high, and you have a chance to get up and down for par. That was probably the best struck one of the day. As you can see, yeah, their carry just climbing up a little bit now, but all numbers staying really, really consistent. Ball speed now climbing up a little bit, 2145, and we're thinking, okay, now it's a club that if you are hitting it really out the middle, that one there, I will say it was completely out the middle of the club face. That's when you're gonna start seeing those really strong distances. But I don't think Taylor made a focusing on that too much. They're probably more focusing on when you're not hitting it out the middle, because that's the most important thing for a beginner's iron. Frankly, they don't probably care that much about the sweet spot for where it's supposed to be. They want the sweet spot to be as large as possible. So if you're hitting it out of the toe, hitting it out of the heel, they still want you to be getting good smash, good numbers, good consistent spin rate, and that means the carry will be pretty similar every single time. So that one there was low on the face, but it still did pretty well. Very similar to the last shot, but those numbers again are still pretty good. For a shot that was low off the face there, just, just a little bit low, I've got nigh on the highest carry with the last one, very similar data, and spin just a few hundred RPM lower than what it was the average. If you are hitting it lower on the face, you always probably think it's gonna change slightly, but it's only changed slightly in that RPM by about two to 300. It's really not that bad. So I think that's pretty good so far. The dispersion is a little bit disappointing, but you can kind of, segregate those two to the first initial ones that were dead straight. And then when I've warmed up a little bit, I need to work on my swing, they're a bit to the right. So let's hit one more and really try and just go down the middle here, try and hit a nice little draw just to finish off. And then I'll give my final thoughts on the stealth irons and why I think if you're a beginner, these should be in your mind to think. And why I think if you're a beginner, these definitely should be some irons you're thinking of purchasing in 2022. There you go, I think that one was pretty good to finish. Yeah, you can see that one, finally, finally, I got the club face square. And that's what I think is a pretty much, although my attack angle wasn't great on that one, and spin rate was a little bit low, that one is a pretty bang on shot for a beginner's six iron there. I know you may be looking at those carry numbers and thinking, uh, that's not a normal six iron. It's not, the lofts are lower, which I'll talk about in just a second. But this club, I think for a beginner's set, if you're looking to invest in a beginner's set, in 2022, this is one you should be looking for. And here's why. So you can see that I was getting some very, very good numbers with this Stealth 6 iron. It is a strong club. And if you are looking at the sheer amount of beginner's irons in 2022, and just going back a few years as well, if you are a beginner with no real knowledge, you're gonna be quite confused as to what to get. And if we're being honest here at Golf Magic, any set will get you by very, very well. When you're looking at the specifics between a TaylorMade, a Callaway, a Mizuno, we here and all reviewers are saying what we think is better, but they're all gonna help you improve your game. The reason why I think the Stealth is good is because it looks good, is <laughs> one of the main things. When we go first into golf, we're probably a bit more picky as to what goes in our bag, and we're probably a bit more influenced by the aesthetics of it. When I first began golf, I was looking at everything and the shiniest, the coolest thing is what I would be drawn towards. I probably wouldn't be drawn towards something that say like the Sim 2 Max because it was huge and it didn't look great. Whereas if I was looking at this, the TaylorMade Stealth, I would be a little bit more influenced because it's a nice looking club. It doesn't scream at you from across the room in American golf, but it looks very nice. And if I laid my eyes on it, it would be the exact club that I'd want in my bag. Are there iron sets that feel better for a beginner? Yeah. I'll be honest, I think it's very difficult to find a beginner's iron set that feels better than let's say a forged Mizuno iron. 
but they're not as forgiving. And the main thing you should be looking for when you are a beginner is forgiveness. I don't care if it feels absolutely awful, no clubs do, but I don't care if it doesn't feel as good as some other ones. You should care about the dispersion you're getting within 10 or 20 shots with a six iron or a four iron. And this is why the stealth is so important because wherever you hit it across this club face, it's still gonna get you good results. And it'll be a really good beginner set for then going down into 15, 14, maybe even single figures. Some iron sets such as the Sim 2, the Cobra Red Speed, you'd get for a while, you'd get for a few years, then when you'd improve your game, you're probably looking at a bit more of a player's set. The Stealth, arguably, you could use for a long time. And as I said, I would happily put a three, a four, a five iron in my bag, just because when I'm out, let's say 240, 250 yards from the green, usually I'm going for it in two on a par five. So if I miss it on the green slightly, that's fine. So I don't want to use a blade. I don't want to use an MB club on that. I want to use a club with as most forgiveness as possible. And that's what a lot of PGA Tour players are doing as well. They're not going to go towards the stealth, but you see them with P790s in their bag and the long irons because they want to make sure if they do hit it a little bit out of the toe or out of the heel, they want to get as tight as dispersion as possible. As these are beginner sets, they're actually a very fair price. I'll put the RRP on the screen for you now. So you can see pretty good price there, a bit cheaper than some other models, and that will go down as the year goes on. If you are someone who is a beginner and already has a beginner's iron set, I will never tell you guys to get another set. If you have the Sim 2, don't upgrade to these. They're all pretty similar to each other. But if you are looking to get into the game and getting a beginner set, Stealth is the one for you. And I'll be sure to compare it to all the new iron sets that are out in 2022. So I'll put the lofts quickly up on the screen for you now for the Stealth, but they are very similar to the Callaways, to the Mizunos, to other things. They're actually not as strong as some of them. So don't be worried. I know it says a six iron, may not mean that, but either way, it's gonna help you hit it further and improve your game. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. If you have, leave a like down below. And if you have any questions about the TaylorMade Stealth Iron Set, let me know down in the comments, because I'll answer them. If you guys are new to Golf Magic, hit the subscribe button because we've got a lot of exciting content and comparisons coming very, very soon. I'm going to be pretty much in Kings Golf at Manning's Heath comparing every single thing that's been released and will be released this year. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all of our content. And until the next video, guys, I will see you later.